Proverbs 13, 7. There is that maketh rich, and yet hath nothing. There is that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. A poor man can be rich in things other than money. Moses traded riches and pleasure for affliction and reproach. In Hebrews 11, verse 24, 5, and 6, it says, By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect under the recompense of reward. Now think about Moses' little father. Acts chapter 7, verse 20 to 23, it says, In which time Moses was born, and was exceeding fair, and nourished up in his father's house three months. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him for her own son. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians as mighty in words and in deeds. And when he was full forty years old, it came to his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. God's reward was better than Egypt's treasures. He chose God's poor people over Pharaoh's rich family. He knew and understood this proverb. This is the man that no longer heard the voice of Pharaoh, but he heard God say, I am that I am. He left the riches of Egypt, but God gave them their spoils when departing, and he saw their powerful army destroyed in the Red Sea. Our verse tells of the man who chose to be rich and actually had nothing, while the other chose to be poor and had true wealth. There are by far greater riches for the one who's not focused on the riches of this world. Luke 16, 11 says, If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? Consider these as true riches. The presence of God, the fruit of the Spirit, wisdom and truth from God's revelation. And who can ever forget the eternal life that God gives? It's interesting in Proverbs, it says, Better is a dry morsel and quietness therewith in a house full of sacrifices with strife. So a cracker with quietness is better than a filet mignon with strife. Plus, we find that God has prepared for us things way beyond our senses. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 says, But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. David understood this principle. In Psalm 84.10 it says, for, in the day, for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. We find the Apostle Paul forsook all to follow Christ. A lengthy portion, but to listen to these words, Philippians 3, 4-11. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ." Yea, doubtless, and I count all things lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any re means I might attain the resurrection of the dead. I believe there's a verse that really is the capstone of all these thoughts. First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 6, But godliness with contentment is great gain.